Hello friends and welcome to the video. If you do not recognize my face, hi, I'm Olivia. I am a perfume enthusiast reviewer and I am here today to talk about my most complimented perfumes. So if you're into that sort of thing, please consider subscribing. I will be coming out with a new video every Saturday, 10 a.m. PST. This is my second week back for those of you already joining me, and I am very happy to be here. And without further ado, let's get into the video. I wish I could rank these in order, but I'm going to go with no particular order. These are just 10 of the fragrances in my collection that get a lot of compliments because that's a hard thing to quantify. I don't really keep track of how many compliments I get per perfume. Just some stick out in my mind in particular. So we're just gonna go at it with no rhyme or reason. So the first one I'm gonna start off with is Toca Florence. This is a heady gardenia jasmine fragrance that's paired up with a nice, delicious, juicy pear. So to me, this smells elegant. It has definitely some elements of vintage qualities to it. So that heady white floral is not going to be for everyone, but I think it's really nicely balanced with that juicy pear. So it doesn't feel too vintage. It just has this classic touch to it that is very refined, very elegant. I guess the compliment that I got from this was a little bit strange. So I went to a jazz show. I was walking up the steps and I passed by a guy and he was like, oh, you smell really good. And I was like, thank you. And he was like, it kind of smells like something my mom wore, but it smells so good on you. So yes, if you're into a white floral and something that's a little juicy pear, this is such a beautiful gardenia fragrance. The next one we're gonna go over is Sharosa 71. This is not the original Bum Bum Cream scent. This is the one that has caramel, vanilla, sea salt, macadamia, white chocolate, very, very gourmand. And the reason I'm doing this one next is because at the same jazz club, I was in the green room and one of the band members said, he sat down next to me and said, something smells like Eggo waffles. And I was like, is it me? I kind of agree. This has a syrupy, sweet quality to it. It's very, very gourmand. To me, it smells like buttered toffee popcorn. Mm, it's so good. I put this with Bath and Body Works um, pumpkin pecan waffle lotion. And if you wanna smell truly super sickly sweet, gourmand, edible dessert, this is it. Next is my absolute baby. This is Kaoli Invite Only. I have talked about this thing a million times across my platforms. And this is got a dark cherry, tobacco, honey, oud. So it's warm, ambery, resinous dark, a little bit sweet, a little bit woody. It's kind of moody. I, I really, really, really enjoy this one, but I've noticed that it is polarizing. A lot of people can say that this is very perfumey. It is quite strong. The lasting power is fantastic. I know some of the Kaoli fragrances aren't always the longest lasting, but this one definitely is. And if you like a true amber fragrance, I think that this is fantastic. Try it first. This is not blind buy safe. The next one is called Entrance by Andrea Mock. This is an Icelandic perfumer and she has now sent me a ton of bottles and her stuff is so niche. It's so unique. And I typically do not like a green leaning vanilla. That is totally not my vibe usually. And when I first got this, I thought mm, it might be a little too green for me. But as I let it settle into the skin, I smelled like a woodland mystical fairy. This warm vanilla, slightly spiciness came through on the skin. And there is just something literally magical and intoxicating. So if you guys are into niche houses that push the boundaries a little bit, I would definitely check out Andrea Mock. Her fragrances are really, really unique. I will definitely talk about more in the future. Next up is another 13 by Le Labo. Now I feel like the house of Le Labo gets a lot of flack on the perfume community 
pages. And I personally, I have so many Le Labo fragrances. I love them so much. I have literally paid and bought them with my own money. Even though I'm sent a lot of stuff, I will still pay for this fragrance because to me, this is one of these molecular perfumes that not everyone seems to be able to smell. But for those of you who can smell it, it just smells like the pheromones of the hottest person you have ever met. I, I get something slightly citrus. I get something slightly salty. And it is just, it's so intoxicating, but incredibly difficult for me to describe. But when I say that this garners compliments from men and women, old, young, this is, if you can smell it, an incredibly sexy, but understated fragrance. It's not screaming, it has good performance, but it's not something that is like, look at me, look at me. It just, if you were to walk by and you're wearing this, people will be like, oh wow, that person is really fucking cool. Next up is London Funk from the house of Wilhelm. Now this one is very interesting because it's called London Funk and it literally smells like funk, skanky, pot. Like it smells like dank marijuana. It has a really strong citrus in the opening, like a really mouth-watering, tangy citrus. And I'm not certain off the top of my head if it's like bay leaf or oregano, but there is something herbaceous about this. But the citrus in my mind helps this to not be overwhelmingly green not too earthy. There's something very, very fun, sparkling, and happy about this. And surprisingly, the only uh, compliments that I've gotten on this one are from men, and it smells like marijuana. This is not your typical compliment getter, but nonetheless, I have gotten a lot of compliments with this. Next is Romantic from Orientica. This is almost a dupe of Delina by Perfums de Marly. Um, it has that nice tanginess, it has that lovely rose, but I believe this to be a slight bit more green in a dewy, fresh, crisp sense, not an earthy sense. Um, so this has a very sheer rose, it's very girly, it's sweet but fizzy but tangy, and I swear this stuff is like human catnip because I wore this out and I just got incredible amount of compliments. I would walk by people and people I didn't even know were like, hey, um, can you tell me what your perfume is? Because that is so good. And everything I've tried from the house of Orientica, their bottles are really substantial. They last a very, very long time. And this is a fraction of the price of your typical Delina. So this one's a good option if you like Delina but can't necessarily afford to always buy it. The next one is called Rami by Define Me. Now this is a fluffy, sweet, slightly gourmand that to me this almost smells like angel food cake and texturally kind of gives the experience of angel food cake. It's not a dense, super thick dessert. It's like fluffy, warm, happy, and that's exactly the experience I get when I wear this. Their products are so incredibly long-lasting. They are really good quality and they're a very good price. And so this one, if you're dipping your toes into the world of gourmand, this would be a great place to start. Next is Perfect Intense by Marc Jacobs. This is a sweet almond bomb. It almost reminds me of a sweet almond Danish. This is, again, it seems like gourmands really are the most compliment getting because there's just something interesting about a person smelling like so sweet and decadent. And this one, obviously with it being a designer, you can get them at decent prices when they go on sale on Sephora. This in comparison to the original is much deeper. It's not as tangy and it doesn't have that like Jolly Rancher type feel. This is like a sweet almond bomb. I think because this is sweet and warm and cozy, that's why I tend to get a lot of compliments on this. And last on the list is Sweet Ash by Sniff. This kind of has a little bit of that like Baccarat Rouge, 
airy, sweet saffron kind of vibe to it. But I find this to be a little bit more unisex, a little less sweet, a little bit more woody, but it still has that beautiful, slightly sweet airiness with a little bit of spice. And this just seems to be very, very easy going. So obviously if you don't wanna spend a bunch of money and get Baccarat Rouge, this is not a dupe by any means, but they are certainly along similar lines and it is not near as sweet or creamy as Cloud by Ariana Grande. So if you're looking for something along those lines, but a little bit more sheer, a little bit more unisex, and a little bit more everyday. This seems to get me a lot of compliments. So that's it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I would love to hear what is your most complimented fragrance, number one. And if you've got any weird compliments that you've gotten from anybody, drop those down below in the comments. And if you don't already, make sure that you follow me on Instagram and on TikTok, and I will see you next Saturday. Bye.